Um, this video was prompted by a comment of a subscriber of ours, uh, Delbert O'Grady, and he asked, how did we go about choosing the Bolero? And Because uh, I think he's looking for a motorhome himself. And it got us thinking about, well, actually, how do you choose a motorhome? There, there's an awful lot to consider. And it actually got me thinking and uh, wrote down a few things. So I've got on my laptop just here, I've got a load of notes. So if I keep looking over there, that, that's why. Um, and we'll perhaps sort of explain some of our thinking as how we got to choosing this particular motorhome. Yeah. And just have a look at some of the features in the motorhome at the end of the video. So you understand... Why we chose it. Why we chose it. Yeah, and it, it, I know a lot of people are looking at motorhomes, so hopefully this will help you make up your mind. So there's a number of key things you need to look at. And I've got on my list, I've got about 10 main items um, that you might want to consider. Number one is the size of the motorhome. It, will it fit on your drive? Um, are you happy with parking it? Uh, are you happy driving a vehicle that size? Will it be your only vehicle? Um, do you have other transport? We have a car. Yeah. So, um, so that's important. If it was your only vehicle, you might be looking at a compact motorhome, perhaps. Or, like us, if you've got the space, larger motorhomes. Or you might look at a microvan. You might want a vehicle that can fit under uh, height barriers. Barriers, yeah. Or you may be looking at an A-Class for their better insulation and uh, luxury. Yeah, and a wonderful view all around the front. Yeah, you get a great view at the front of an A-Class. Yeah, so the problem with size for us initially was the size of the drive, wasn't it? Yeah. We couldn't park anything bigger than six metres no. on the drive. No, so we initially looked at, at compact motor Yeah, homes. so we had small ones that gradually increased in size to maximum we could have until... Yeah. We moved here, and first thing we thought was great, long drive. Nice long drive. I'd have, have a big a motor. Home. motor. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so that may be one of the big in, biggest determining factors, whether you're going for a large motor or a compact motor. Um, and the other, the next one is the purpose of the motor. What are you going to use it for? Do you need a vehicle to carry your skis or your quad bikes, or so? It, do you need something like a big garage at the back, uh, or do you need more storage? You know, kayaks or canoes yeah, to take with you. haven't got any of those really. Most we've taken is a bike on the back, isn't yeah. it? We had a bike rack. I think the only consideration for us storage is where to put all poppies. Poppies stuff. Poppies yeah. stuff, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and perhaps have a think about what hobbies you use and how you're going to use it. The next one was lounge layout. Uh, and by that I mean how many people are going to be travelling with you. We, we normally only take two people with us. Um, but do you need to carry passengers? Uh, if you do carry passengers, you need by law in modern motorhomes to have seat belts. So you'll need a van with travel seats. How about your pets? Are you taking pets with you? Dogs, cats, ferrets, budgies? budgies you, you might need extra storage for their gear. And where are you going to keep them when, when they're travelling? Poppy stays in a little crate on, under the chair and she's strapped, she's strapped in, or the crate's strapped in there. Are you planning to entertain some friends? Uh, will there be enough seating for them? Do you need a, a big table or a small one? Do I notice a lot of the Continental vans come with these huge, huge tables, tables they? Yeah. so they, they obviously do a lot of entertaining. Yeah. Some people just make do with a little table. Do you want to be able to put your feet up in the lounge? That's quite important. Someone asked me that the other day, so I can, I can put my feet up here. <laughs> yeah, but I think there was someone to know, could you put your feet up across there? No, I don't think I can actually reach no. across there because I've got the table in the way, but there you no. go. No. Um, sleeping layout is the next thing. Um, you spend a quite a bit of time, a third of your time, in the motorhome sleeping. So what sleeping layouts? Um, and, that, and that sleeping arrangement could be different from how many people are travelling with you. Uh, people may well, come, come separately to come and stay with you, so you might only need two... two seats passenger and driver's seat but you may need uh, four beds the main layouts this this the well we've got a magazine yeah. here Just <laughs> the, the standard layout the, there's how many have they got there Tw 33 different Layout. standard layouts yeah. there so <laughs> i'll try and break it down for you i mean main layouts are french bed um length lengthwise or transverse island beds now an island bed is a bed much like you've got at home, 
you, you can get in either side. Transverse means it's across the, the, the width of the van mm. and lengthwise means it's along the length of the van so there's a couple of differences there. You could have single beds with a centre or a rear bathroom. We've got single beds with a rear bathroom and uh, if they've got uh, if the single beds are at the back of the van you tend to have a small garage to go with that. Um, you can have rear lounge, um, a lot of people like rear lounges because they're great for entertaining, or an end kitchen um, which tends to be for smaller motorhomes and you tend to have make-up beds. An end kitchen is how we started, it had an end kitchen and a corner bathroom mm. with a, with a, a make-up bed. Fixed beds are great if you just want to crash into bed, if you, if you just want to flop into bed and you've got a bed that's already made up, it's great. Um, but you end up possibly with a smaller lounge. Yeah. So we've got, I wouldn't say we've got a big lounge. Um, French beds mean that you end up, unfortunately, climbing over someone. So as long as you don't mind that, French beds are great. They're just well, they're fixed beds, aren't they? So. Yeah, but they do tend to have a cut off, don't they? Some worse than others. Yeah, if one so... of you is a bit... Shorts. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Glad but, you said it. <laughs> but you can you can end up, you know, yeah. bit too much of a cut off. Yeah, with your feet. And they don't tend to be that wide either. No, because mm. you're limited because it's across the width yeah. of the van. That's right. Okay. Fixed beds or single beds, um, or making up beds, drop down beds. Are you happy with climbing in and out? Are you happy going up a ladder? How long and how wide are the beds, especially island beds? which tend to be a bit short for us six-footers mm -hmm. uh, and how easy is it to get in and out and that's a key consideration because you're spending a third of your time sleeping in the motorhome if you don't get yeah. a good night's sleep you're not going to no. have a good adventure no, I mean those transverse island beds tend to sometimes be longer because they have an infill don't they Yeah. and you can sort of pull it out Yeah. Um, push it back during the day so you can walk round it and then pull it out when you go to bed. Transverse island beds are better if they're in a wider vehicle. Cool. Yeah. yeah, so an eight foot wide bailey. Oh, sorry. Baileys are um, eight foot wide so they can have a, a longer bed. So. Yeah. Next thing is cooking. Uh, do you need full cooking facilities? Oven, microwave, a preparation area? Do you need a big kitchen? Are you happy with a two burner hob? And to go with uh, cooking you need storing storage facilities for the cooking utensils. The more cooking you do, the more places pans you're going to need, need pots and, and pans and ingredients. And ingredients. But if you're only using a two burner hob, you could probably get away with a Ridgeway monkey and <laughs> and um, a pan and a, and a kettle. Yeah. Um, fridge. Big. Do you need a big fridge freezer? We've got a big fridge freezer. Uh, it may depend how long you're going to be away for at a time, so how many weeks you're going for. So you might need to store, uh, fr uh, to freeze some um, some materials. Um, we freeze bread, don't we? So yeah. we've got some when we get there to well, make toast and things. Yeah, and we, don't, we, tend, we only tend to use it a little bit for if we want to take in some ready meals with us, yeah. frozen ready meals. But it's nice to have a big fridge. We, we do take a bit of beer and wine with us. Nice to have cold wine on beer when you get there. Yeah, so yeah. That, and that's a consideration. Uh, the other thing is some fridges have automatic energy selection. I know ours does. So that means that when you arrive on site and you, you stop the engine, the fridge switches off the alternator back, uh, for, from, from, the va from the van and it switches on to the mains hookup once you plug the mains hookup. If you then... Um, stop in a stop in a lay by or something it automatically switches to gas but it waits doesn't it doesn't it wait it waits about 15 minutes the idea is yeah. that if you um, pull into a petrol station filling station it won't automatically try and switch onto gas whilst you're filling up with petrol no. with potentially no, catastrophic results so there, there are safety features with automatic energy selection fridges to to prevent you lighting up when you shouldn't do yeah. So you do have to wait about 15 minutes for our fridge to switch on to gas when you're not on the electric hookup. Mm. But we had one before where you had to do it yourself. Yeah. And we often would park up, forget to switch it on gas, yeah. remember when we were somewhere else, and then yeah. on the way back think, oh, yeah. we forgot to put forgot it on to gas. Put it gas. And then, of course, you've then got the problem is what do you do with the food that's you've been travelling for two and yeah. a half hours. It's defrosted slightly. Yeah, yeah. It can be a worry. And also, if you don't put it on battery, then as you're going along, yeah, 
you know, you had to do that, didn't yeah, you, with yeah. those? So I, I like uh, automatic mm. energy selection fridges. There's some manufacturers who don't don't, don't like, like them. them, do they? No, no. I think they're possibly because of their extra expense. But if you can remember to do it, then it's fine. Yeah, you know? that's. But yeah, washing facilities next. I've got on my list. Do you want to use the shower in a van, uh, or do you always use the site facilities? We wanted a bathroom with a like a changing area. Uh, but some people are just happy with a, a wet room where you share the floor space with a shower and sometimes you have pull down sinks yeah. uh, and the the uh, sink um, the shower riser comes out of the sink and you 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 double up with that it's uh, it depends on how you want to use the the shower facility a lot of people don't use showers i think no. that was the first question we got asked when we went to look at motors wasn't it yeah. oh you don't want a shower is it don't we? <laughs> Don't we? I mean, if you you know you're wild camping or you're on a site with no facilities or yeah. whatever, yeah, then it's great to have your own shower, isn't it? And I quite like that with showering here and dressing here and yeah, especially yeah. when it's cold and snow outside. Yeah, yeah. Heating and water. Um, we've got Audi central heating, which is a, a wet central heating. It's a sort of central heating you'd probably be more familiar with at home. There are little radiators under the seats and some fluid is pumped around the, the system. So the drawback with it is it possibly takes a while to warm up. And the mm. van's been sitting on the drive here for a while, and we just mm. jumped into it. It's and it gradually was, warming it's up. It's gradually warming up now. So yeah. that's why we're sitting here with jumpers on. That's right. <laughs> and I'm thinking of wearing a hat. And it's hailing outside. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But it, it does get warm. It has got a little fan under this seat here. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if you can hear it. That's starting to pump out warm so air. So it's now. pumping out warm air, and yeah. that's to get warm air into the cab. Mm. Um, the the bedroom um, gets very warm because the heater is actually under the, my bed, so yes. I, I get properly cooked at night. <laughs> on that, so so they, they they do have drawbacks. The other alternative is Truma blown air heating. Now I think the the van warms up quicker because it's blowing hot air mm. into the van. Yeah. The only thing I found when we had blown air heat and I just felt it made the air a bit dry. Yeah, but I think we had an, an older style one, didn't we? It didn't have a boiler. It worked had a, a gas fire. fire. Thing, yeah. And the problem we had was sometimes the gas fire either ran out of gas yeah. or it went off. Yeah, it went off of its own accord. I think it was something wrong so with we, it. So then we were really cold, weren't we? Yeah. <laughs> woke yeah. up so Yeah, woke up yeah. frozen. Yeah. But yeah, so it, what sort of heating do you want? That's quite important. The other thing about uh, heating water is obviously how much water do you want to carry with you? Uh, our, our van has a 90 litre fresh water tank and a similar size wastewater tank. If we carry 90 litres, that's 90 kilograms of weight with us, so we don't tend to travel with a full tank of water. But if you have enough water in so that you can make yourself a cup of coffee, or, or perhaps just enough to get you over the first day when you arrive on site, that's what we tend to do. Mm. You know, it's just having enough water to to use when you get somewhere rather than having to go fill up as soon as you get there. Yeah, because often we've forgotten, haven't we? Yeah. We've this, done everything and then gone back. <laughs> yeah, this this time of year though, we, we, tra we do travel with the tank empty because it, we don't leave it in the drive with water in it. No, so, no. Uh, so we do tend to arrive and then have to fill up, but in the summer, put a bit of water in there and it's great. Um, some some vans, camper vans, smaller vans, only have a little um, a little jerry can type type thing, and, mm. and if that's all you need, then you know that's fine, and a lot yeah. of people get by uh, just on a Using little bit of water. Yeah. I think even when we're travelling without water, what we do is we fill up a little jug that's in the fridge, and that's enough to make yourself a cup of tea, a cup of coffee. Yeah, yeah. You you know you get by. Um, Winterized. It's a good time to talk about winterization. <laughs> it's blown a hooli outside. Um, yeah, winterization means that your van is insulated from the cold. It means that the interior stays warmer uh, compared to the outside, but it also means that your tanks, your water tank, your waste tank, are insulated against the cold. We don't have full winterization on this van, but we do have what are called frost heaters. And what they do is there's a little element inside the tank and that stops the water inside the tank freezing. The danger, of course, is still that the, the pipes to the outside can freeze. So we do have to be, still be careful with the water. But if you're in a van on site, you're on electric hookup, you've got the heating on, the water is fine. There's no problem with that. We've never had a problem 
only on the very old van. On, a, on an old one. van, yeah, we did have a problem with... Because that had no heating for the tanks, did it, or anything? No, what happened was a bit of water got into the waste uh, tap and I went to empty the wastewater and it's a plastic hose and the head just came off my hand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> got to, I broke the hose. <laughs> so yeah, you just got to be careful with that in the winter. Final thing I've got on my list is the base vehicle. Now um, there are different makes of, of van and I'm, I'll probably miss one out here but there's three that are the same effectively. It's the Peugeot, the Citroen, and the Fiat. We've got a Fiat Ducata which is the same as a Peugeot Boxer which is the same as a Citroen Relay. Uh, basically the same van. The only thing that changes are some of the some of the cupboards here and, and the badge on the steering wheel. And the Ad Blue. Oh and the Ad Blue. Now, it's a Peugeot. I don't know about the Breno but the Peugeot is Ad Blue isn't it? Which yeah this is, this is, a, is the is little isn't... additive that you have to add for Euro 6 uh, emissions vans. Uh, and then you have an extra little tank on the Peugeot where you have to add this liquid, mm. which may or may not be a pain for some people. It just sort of, when we had that hire car, didn't we, when we were on yeah. the anniversary tour, yeah. and that came kept flashing, that had blue. It, it, it was, it was 1,500 miles to go, wasn't it? I no, think. it's less than that, it's 500. Was it 500? Yeah, and so we think, where on earth do we get this stuff from? We were on but, Sky, weren't we? Yeah. And we thought, well, we're not going to do, hopefully not going to do 500 miles on Sky. Which, of course, be may right. be a consideration if you're away, you know, in the middle of nowhere yeah. for a long time. You know, do you really want to be worrying about where you're going to get Ad Blue from? It might not be a problem, I don't know. I've not, not driven we a van with Ad Blue, so... No. don't honestly know. The other makes are Ford. Uh, yeah, some nice, very uh, nice, aren't they? Uh, sh Chasson? The sh yeah, I'll probably pronounce it wrong. Chasson do uh, a Ford based one. Lots of Fords, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think Marquis have got a, a Ford based uh, model, haven't they, as well? And uh, the, I think the thing I like about the Fords is they look much more like a car when you're really sitting mm. in them rather than a little truck. thought it looked like your sister's Fiesta, didn't you? Yeah, it does. It looks like the sister's bigger scale. Fiesta. <laughs> bigger scale. <laughs> about four times the size, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Renaults. You do see Renaults, Renault Traffic, the Renault Master. Mm. Of course, the inevitable VWs, mustn't forget VWs. Um, obviously, loads of older VWs, uh, the modern VW. And the VW Crafter is the, the latest one, which is a, a, a bigger version. It's a, I think it's bigger than the Ducato. And, of course, you can't forget Mercedes. No. Mercedes Sprinters, uh, they've been around for a while. A lot of the upmarket motorhomes have a Mercedes Sprinter as the base vehicle. So the thing to think about with the base vehicle is, are you happy with driving, um, the driving position? Um, the one thing I would say about the Ducata is, I'm a bit, I'm near six foot, and I do find my knees bump against the dashboard a little bit if I've got the steering wheel too close. And the, the steering wheel actually is a little bit too far away for me as well, so, yeah, you know, other than that, it's very comfortable, the seats are very comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a preference for manual or automatic? Um, this, the Ford and Mercedes do proper automatics. I would say that the Peugeot, uh, Citroen Relay, and the uh, Fiat. Um, don't, Fiat don't do an automatic, now, do they? Don't they? No, I don't no. think so. No, I think Peugeot do a, do a, an, a, an automatic, but it's yeah. um, not a full automatic. It's what they call a robotized, and it ch it changes gear for you and. and my experience of those is you notice it changing gear, but other people may may, mm. may say otherwise. Maybe they've got better, I don't know. If you want a full automatic, you're really sort of looking at either a Ford or a Mercedes. Uh, and also the other advantage of Mercedes is they're often rear-wheel drive as well. And so some we're front-wheel drive. We're right? front-wheel yeah. drive, yeah. yeah. And that can be that can be an issue if you you tend to park off hard standing a lot. If you've got a heavy van and you're on wet grass, you're better off with the weight at the back of the van where you mm. get better traction. Yeah. Other thing to consider, and it's not a small consideration now, is whether you're going to be driving into the city. We've got a Euro 5 van, um, that's the emission standards, and sooner or later we're not going to be able to drive it into cities. No, uh, particularly, particularly London. With particularly it. London, yeah. But other sort of continental cities as well, Paris and uh, Antwerp. Antwerp, yeah, well. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you need to have a look at that. Um, most modern vans will be Euro six compliant, but it it's an issue if you're looking at second hand. Perhaps it's a Euro four van. Mm. Will you be able to drive it into the city? So that that's it for my list. 
Um, I thought I'd probably just show you around the van and you can have a look at sort of what we've actually got in here. All right, so I'll just show you around. Uh, we've got this is the the travel seat arrangement. So obviously you've got the travel seats with the seat belts, um, the dinette table, and the swivel seats at the front, which is handy if you're taking people with you, of course. Yeah. You've got the kitchen. It's not a huge worktop. Um, it's it's okay. We use the cooker. Uh, as extra work surface, yeah. so you can you know, put a shopping board on there. The cooker itself is uh, has got an electric hot plate, three gas burners, grill, oven, and storage space below, which is quite handy. Fridge, there's a freezer compartment. It's quite nice and big, that, isn't it? Yeah, which is a decent size. You can fit cup two two loaves in there. Yeah. And it's a fair size fridge here, as you can see, so I tend to use the bottom bit for um, drinks and stuff, and then the other bits there. So, yeah, it's a good size. I think it's actually bigger than our domestic <laughs> fridge <laughs> indoors, yeah. Yeah. which is crazy, really. So, this is uh, this room here, the bedroom, is the room for choosing, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, with this van, this, this bed here adds six foot to the, la to the length. Mm. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we had the the bailey. The, the the van ended about here with the bathroom on the back. That's right. So yeah. with, with the bailey, it was a similar layout with an end bathroom, but a drop down bed and no, no fixed beds, beds in here. In here, no. But this is nice in here because I can watch TV, can't I? When Poppy kicks me out of the chair. Yeah. We've got yeah, extra it, TV in well, here. Two TVs. I go one to in bed here. when I want to, and yeah, you can stay up in there as yeah. long as you want to. So it's two living areas, two really. Two living areas, yeah. Yeah, and obviously you can close this, this close door that. here. Yeah. Yeah. Bathroom. Bathroom. Sorry, bathroom. In here. In here, yeah. And um, this was another reason for us choosing it, wasn't it? It's a nice shower. big shower. It's a really nice shower. Yeah. It's got two drainage yeah. plugs, holes, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, they're, fortunately, they're, someone pointed out they're both on the same side, so if, you, <laughs> if you're not level side to side, it still won't drain. But there no. you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's always useful to have two plugs. Uh, sink, toilet. Yeah, heated, he heated, heated towel rail. rail. Yeah, and there's a big um, cupboard in there that store, normally stores the table, but you've got extra storage in there as well. Yeah. There's plenty of storage with this van. I'll just talk about it. Big area under here. Uh, it's got the boiler in that, that end. Uh, but it's, you know, we can take things like Tassimo with us and goodness knows what else. What else? This one. Oh, fine. Lift up. This one's packed to the gunnels at the moment, You've isn't got it? The screen cover so we've here, got the screen it? cover. Um, we've got chocks. Um, there's the aqua roll in there, yeah, so yeah. And aqua waste. And, and no aqua aqua. Sorry, aqua, aqua waste, waste is, is in here. Aqua, aqua roll, roll is, is under that chair over there. Yeah. So that's the layout. So. And we like it, don't we? We go to the show, don't we? And we go to all the different shows, and we see different bands. And then we say <laughs> we always come back to this layout, don't we? Yeah. So we, you know, as far as our choice is concerned, it, we're quite happy with it. But it's taken us a while to get here. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I mean, the first thing we did was hire, didn't we? We hired a motorhome. Yeah. yeah. Did that a couple of times, and that got us used to the idea that we liked going in a motorhome. Yeah. We like we got used to sights. We like the concept. Didn't we do we like the concept. We like yeah. travelling around the, the west you had at the time. Katie liked it, yeah. and then we bought her first one, didn't we? After that second hire, and that, well, that was always that was compromise because of the size of the vehicle. So you you, you might start out with a compromise, yeah, of a yeah. vehicle anyway because of the size limitations, or if you want it as your only vehicle or mm. whatever, you know. But the thing about motorhome is it gets you out there, yeah. You know, yeah. With the adventures we've had yes. over these years, 
We've done 30,000 miles in this. We've done 30,000 miles in it. We've been yeah. motor homing for 15 years yeah. now, haven't we? Yeah, and we found even when we couldn't go very far, yeah. when, my, when some parents were ill, that we had the, the Starfire then, didn't we? And we used to just go five miles up the road yeah. to the site at Ashwell. And yeah. You felt like you'd gone away for the weekend, yeah. walking through the village and things like that. You, so you don't have to go hundreds of miles. No. No. But if it's convenient, you can get to it quickly, you can pack it up. Then yeah. just yeah. go. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just go. I think yep. there's, I think there's yes. a motor home hire company called that, isn't there? There is actually. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so, um, yeah, so we got a little bit of information out of the practical motor home uh, magazine this month. Always find that quite useful, and it gives you an idea of the sort. Sorry, am I? Yeah. <laughs> sort of layouts that you, Poppy. Would you just Please. get down there for a minute? You're not the camera. You're not the camera over. And uh, the sort of layouts you can have, and it might, you know, it might just get you thinking. Yeah. But, but honestly, as long as you find something that you're happy with uh, yeah. and it it suits you, then just go for it. Just do it. Yeah. So I think we're off to the show Thursday, aren't yeah. we? I think we're going to try and look at different layouts. We're trying to have a look at some of the different layouts. Rather than just our favourite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and try and pick up on some of the layouts that we've mentioned. Um, yeah. There was a good video I watched um, yesterday, wasn't there? Yeah, and I'll put the link, put uh, the link down, down below. below. But that was good about. Uh, and it was a, about a rear lounge layout, and it, yeah. it absolutely so, suited that family. Yeah, that's you know. right. Yeah. Yeah, just have a little proper think about it. Yeah. And um, anyway, so anything well, else you want to add? I don't think so. No. So off to the show now. After the show, so give us a like if you if you like the video. Uh, leave a comment. Remember to subscribe. Hit the notifications icon next to the subscribe button and that way you'll get some updates when we go to the show. And later on this month we're going to do a live session. Uh, we'll let you know the details when and where. And perhaps we'll pick up on some of the points we mentioned about how you choose a motorhome. Yeah. Right, so that's it for now. We'll All see right. you soon. Bye.